So, Abe, were you doing something strenuous when this happened? Trying to. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it, Abe. It happens to everybody once in a while. Not to me, Mike. Yeah, checked it over. It doesn't seem to be any permanent damage. Yeah, I just hate not being able to use it, you know? Have you tried whirlpools? Yeah, twice a day. What happens? Nothing. No, just give it a rest, and I'm sure in no time you'll be up again and ready for action. Thanks, Mike. That makes me feel better, man. Oh, Abe, uh, by the way, how's your leg? <laughs> I was feeling so bad I smiled from my doctor just what I had I said, doctor, Mr. Indeed Can you tell me what's ailing me? He said, yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah All you need, all you really need Doctor, doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes. No, Nurse Borilsky's not in yet. She can pick up her G string now? <laughs> okay, I'll tell her. Didn't know Faye played guitar. <laughs> Mike, the roof is leaking again. I went upstairs to your apartment. It's flooded. So, just play in the shallow end. <laughs> Mike, you heard what the roof guy said. We have to replace the whole thing right away. So we'll get a new roof. Good thing you've been saving for a rainy day. Well, Mike, it's $9,000. I don't have that kind of money. I'm an assistant professor at a small liberal arts college. They pay me in Brie. <laughs> don't look at me. I'm broke. I don't get it. I mean, you've been driving the same car for years. You're not dating anyone. You wear all my clothes. Where does your money go? I'm afraid I can't answer that, Dick. All I can tell you is that it involves national security and free-range chickens. I thought you doctors were supposed to be rich. I'm a family doctor, Dick. Most of my money goes back into the practice, and the rest on the ponies. Well, we're going to have to borrow some money from somebody. Well, we could always ask... Wait, you're going to say dad, right? Don't say dad. Don't even think it. Well, why not? He ought to be good for something. Oh, yeah, besides humiliating us every chance he gets? Boy, you're bitter. <laughs> Just because he doesn't speak to you for most of the 80s. Come on, Mike, you know what he's going to say. Let me tell you something about being an adult. It's really unfair. Dad is not that nasal. Come on, Mike, there's got to be someplace else that we can borrow the money. Mm, sure, we could always take out a loan, fill out endless forms, maybe get turned down anyway. Or we could borrow from some guy they call Ice Pick and hope we can pay him back before he okay, breaks okay, our... Okay, okay, we will borrow the money from Dad, but we better do it soon. <sighs> <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you the club soda is not for drinking? It's for stain removal. Okay? How could I have been so selfish, Grant? I don't know. I'm so sorry I was thirsty. Well, sorry is not going to get this marmalade stain out of my tie, is it? Grant, for once, would you stop thinking about yourself and... Oh, who am I kidding? <laughs> sorry I'm late. happened to you? Trouble in paradise. I broke up with Dana this morning. You know, I'll tell you something. Every time I think I've seen as low as a man can go, along comes another one who's even more depraved than worthless. What do you mean, this? No, oh, no, I just didn't have time to change my uniform. Dana wanted to play chain gang nurse and escape convict this morning. Again. Like I don't have any other outfits, you know? Well, at least you got out with your dignity. Yeah. I was with Dana for 12 years. 12 years. So long I was married to Gail. Yeah. What have I got to show for it? A couple of tattoos, about six dozen bowling trophies, and this one hickey from last October. I, 
I thought that was a rope burn. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> but, Faye, what, what about the good times? I mean, the memories, the history. Yeah, I got all that. But one day you just look over and you go, hey, this is stale. Right now, somebody better say, Abe, that's not the reason your wife left you. Right now. Don't be so sure. Dana and I got into a rut. Listen, at this point, I'd rather just stay at home alone in front of the tube. Yeah, television. Isn't it great? Television? Who say anything about television? <laughs> Remember, Mike, make a little small talk first, all right? Don't just go right in and ask Dad for the money. Hold on. I have to ask Dad for the money? Why don't you do it? Because every time I ask him for anything, the first word that comes out of his mouth is... Now. Dad, could, could I have a little help paying for my college tuition? No. Dad, could I have a little red wagon? No. Dad, could I call you Dad? No. You're right. Maybe I should ask him for the money. yourself a heart surgeon? Well, let me tell you something, Harold Stratford. You don't know the first thing about the way a heart really works. <laughs> this is it. I'm leaving. We will never speak again. Ever. This doesn't count. I have only one more thing to say to you, and I don't care who hears it. I don't believe it. I know. She didn't look sick at all. <laughs> Idiot, don't you get it? Once, four months ago. <laughs> Oh, darling, you know I do. I think we better go. I'm missing something, aren't I? Mike, don't you know who that woman is? Sinead O'Connor with hair? <laughs> She's Dad's mistress. Dick, this is Dad we're talking about, not some character on The Bold and the Beautiful. You and your soaps. I think I'm wrong, huh? I know you're wrong. Okay, then why don't you just ask Dad when we see him? Huh? Okay, I will. Ask me what? Ooh. Dad. Ooh. Dad. Ooh. Michael, Richard. So much for the formalities. Now, what do you want to ask me? Um, maybe we should move this into your office. Oh, how exciting. All right, go on in. Let's get it over with. <laughs> All right. What do you want to ask me? Oh, uh, Dad, if I may call you Dad. Uh, Dick was wondering, I, quite frankly, I could care less whether or not we could uh, borrow some money. Money? Uh-huh. I should have guessed. How much? Well, we need a new roof for the house. Oh, no. Come on, I said how much. Well, this is tedious. $9,000. But you don't have to pay us our allowance again for a really, really long time. <laughs> Let me tell you something about being an adult. Oh, God. This is bad. This is bad. <laughs> Which, obviously, you two know nothing about. You make your choices, you live with them. You wanted to buy that crummy place, so you bought it. Now, I offered you a good living as a member of my practice, but no, you wanted to be a country doctor in a big city, and you, you, you wanted to be a homosexual. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Well, you must admit, it isn't very lucrative. <laughs> so now you discover that maybe you didn't make the best choices, and you come to me. Well, I'm going to give the two of you something a little more valuable than $9,000. $10,000? <laughs> the courtesy of treating you like adults who can solve your own problems. Oh, that's what you gave me last year on my birthday. <laughs> yeah, well, believe me, it was a lot more than you deserve. By the way, your mother says she hardly ever sees you these days. Really? 
And how often does she see you? He uh, likes to make a dramatic exit. <laughs> Six letters. Distress call. Faster. Faye, are you gonna answer that? No, it'll stop. See? We pay her? Faye, honey, I know this job gets a bit tedious, doesn't it? But see, you have to answer the phone, otherwise we don't know who's calling, do we? Yes, we do. It's Dana. He's been calling every five minutes. Well, what if it's not Dana? What if it's somebody who's really sick? You don't know Dana. Who is Dana? Faye's boyfriend, the guy she dumped this morning. You dumped your boyfriend this morning? How come nobody tells me anything? <laughs> Faye, you could at least talk to the guy. You've been with him for 12 years. How bad can he be? Oh, you wouldn't believe what women will settle for. You know, all we ask for in life is one man, one perfect man. And what do we get? Some ape with the unibrow who eats peas with a knife and thinks he's cool because he can swallow a lit cigarette. Of course, I'm only guessing here. If only Dana could swallow a lit cigarette. We might still be together today. <laughs> no, Mike, Mike. Uh, Thanks, when are you going to grow up and face facts? The man has faults. Not this one. Oh, and you're just so sure how. Did somebody appoint you God? I guess things didn't go too well with your dad. Oh, on the contrary, Abe, things are going very well with him. He's having an affair. Harold? <laughs> he is not, and I won't let you stand here and spread rumors about my father. Mike, the man gets five figures for a bypass. Let him do what he wants. <laughs> Mike, we are getting way too emotional about this thing with Dad. All we got to do is be calm and rational and mature and discuss what we saw. Okay. <laughs> Look, all we heard was what the woman said. You call yourself a heart surgeon? Well, let me tell you something, Harold Stratford. You don't know the first thing about the way a heart really works. We don't know what Dad said. We can only guess. You didn't floss again today, did you? Oh, Harold, you're so romantic. Look, I am romantic. I just draw the line at sharing your plaque. <laughs> Darling, you're a fuss budget. I think it's cute. I promise you, when you make an honest woman of me, I will floss every day. Phew. Another few minutes of this, I'm gonna need a cold shower. I'm just trying to be realistic, Mike. You know how Dad gets about personal hygiene. And as for promises, when are you going to make an honest woman of me? Uh, must we have this conversation every day? That's what this is to you? A conversation? Uh, no, of course not. <sighs> you call yourself a heart surgeon? Well, let me tell you something, Harold Stratford. You don't know the first thing about the way a heart really works. You have to admit, Mike, that's at least plausible. Oh, come on. Dad and that woman kissing? Why don't you just have him making it on top of Dad's desk? Why not? He's got a blotter. <laughs> so that's what those things are for. <laughs> well, maybe it didn't happen like that. Maybe it happened like this. I'm sorry, Harold, but you couldn't be more wrong. This man does not need a heart transplant. I'm recommending angioplasty. You're telling me this woman is a heart surgeon with those fingernails? Come on. Oh, fine. Kill the man. I barely know him. God, you're cold. When I think of all the patients I've referred to you... Four. You referred four patients. I can get more in one good evening at a steakhouse. <sighs> you call yourself a heart surgeon? Well, let me tell you something, Harold Stratford. You don't know the first thing about the way a heart really works. Not bad, not bad at all. So, uh, you admit you were wrong. <laughs> not so fast, counselor. Aren't you forgetting something? 
<laughs> oh, darling, you know I do. You know I do what? Oh, come on, Mike. You know that no conversation about bypass and referrals and heart stuff is going to end with, oh, darling, you know I do. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, maybe it didn't happen like that. Maybe it happened like this. I have only one more thing to say to you, and I don't care who hears it. Look, these histrionics are all very amusing, but you're forgetting one thing. I'm the specialist here. You asked for my opinion. I gave it to you. You can ignore it if you want. If you're smart, you won't. The question is, which of us knows more about the situation? <laughs> oh, darling, you know I do. I don't know, Mike. That's not the way I heard it. I could have sworn she said, oh, darling, you know I do. I don't understand you, Dick. It's like you want Dad to be having an affair, like you can't even give him the benefit of the doubt. Huh, has he done one thing, one single thing, to convince you that he's guilty? Dad. Dad. You two should have your throats looked at. <laughs> what brings you here? Really, Dick, does a father need an excuse to stop by and visit his sons? Well, no, except it would be the first time in 17 years. <laughs> <clears throat> well, actually, I was... Uh thinking about your little roof problem and, uh, oh, perhaps I'd been rather hasty in refusing to give you the loan, so... Here it is. Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> oh, God, it is so depressing around here. First my wife leaves me, then Faye breaks up with her boyfriend. Now this thing with Mike's father. Is anybody happy? I am. <laughs> her name is Roxanne. She's a sales representative for a, a drug company. Very dynamic woman. She's very emotional. Very attracted to me. Gee, she sounds swell. I'm sure Mom would love to meet her. Look, I'm trying to apologize here. I may not be very good at it, but then I don't usually have to be. Apologize like we would forgive you. Mike, let him talk. No, I don't want to hear it. Michael, you're acting like a child. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so you keep telling me, and so often. But you know what? I don't care anymore, because I know whatever I am, at least I am not you. Oh, I see. You're trying to hurt me. I'd like to hear what you have to say, Dad. Now you make a play for favorite son? <laughs> Michael, I haven't had many chances in my life to get to know my father. I'll take him when I can. You're in therapy, aren't you? <laughs> Boy, it's so easy for you to be self-righteous about this. You know, when I was your age, I'd been married 10 years and I had two children. After a point, life doesn't change very much. You know, you see the same people, you do the same work. You have the same conversations over and over again. You've been doing it for 20 years. You think you're going to be doing it for another 20. Then, one day, there's this woman. And she makes you feel things that, that you haven't felt in such a long time. And uh, look who I'm talking to, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. <laughs> So you're in love with her. It's serious. No. It's over. And that scene we saw today? I was trying to break it off. It was an adventure. It was a diversion. Made me realize I like the life I have. So how about I take you boys out to dinner? I don't think so, Dad. You go if you want to. Why not? Not hungry? No, Dad. I just don't feel like being with you tonight. Well, I'd ask you for a hug, but that's not really my style. Yeah, we know. I guess it was pretty silly of me to think that I could buy you off. Not that silly. <laughs> well, it's yours if you want it. Don't hate me. Face it, Mike, we need a new roof. We do not need a new roof. We don't need a new roof. <laughs> no. 
what I need are some tropical birds and a talking hippo to complete the rainforest effect. Mike, we got no choice. We got to cash Dad's check. If we cash Dad's check, it means we forgive him for what he's done. And if we don't, we drown. Mm. What a fascinating existential dilemma. Michael, he said it was over. Until the next affair, and the next one, and the next one after that. Yeah, $9,000 a pop, maybe we should encourage him, huh? <laughs> it's not funny, Dick. You can see you're not going to get over this easily, are you? Well, are you? Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me all that much. You know, I've known for a long time what a selfish person Dad can be. I think you just figured it out for the first time today. That's not true. I know that Dad wasn't the world's greatest father. Not one of those guys who came to every Little League game. Or any. Never tossed me his car keys on a Saturday night. Yeah, son, have a good time. I remember when he told me there was no Santa Claus. I was two. But this... Okay, Mike, okay, hold the grudge. But how is that going to fix the roof? Well, let me tell you something about Mike Stratford, mister. Mike Stratford would rather stick to his principles than have a roof over his head. Mike Stratford would do the backstroke through his living room before he would cast that check. Mike Stratford... Let me tell you something about Richard Stratford. He's glad he lives downstairs. I'm just going to leave this here. Just in case you change your mind.